Day 361, Wednesday, February 7, 2 Chronicles 7, 1 Kings 8 54, 66, and 1 Kings 9 1, 9. 2 Chronicles 7 1 22 NKJV When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement, and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God, and the priests attended to their services, the Levites also with instruments of the music of the Lord, which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his mercy endures forever, whenever David offered praise by their ministry. The priests sounded trumpets opposite them, while all Israel stood. Furthermore Solomon consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat. At that time Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt and on the eighth day they held a sacred assembly, for they observed, the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom, as I covenanted with David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods, and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name I will cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done thus too, this land and this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and embraced other gods, and worshipped them, and served them, therefore he has brought all this calamity on them. 1 Kings 8 54-66 NKJV And so it was, when Solomon had finished praying all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, that he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. Then he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. 
there has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before the Lord, be near the Lord our God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day may require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments, as at this day. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to the Lord, twenty-two thousand bulls and one hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On the same day the king consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. At that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days and seven more days, fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David, and for Israel his people. 1 Kings 9 1-9 NKJV And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me, I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever as I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss, and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have embraced other gods, and worshipped them and served them. Therefore the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. Daily Deep Dive, the UCG reading program states, Solomon's prayer was answered in the most miraculous of ways. A bolt of fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifices on the altar. Also, the glory of the Lord filled the temple, 2 Chronicles 7 1, the awesome radiant cloud of God's presence. Thereupon the king and the elders of Israel dedicated the temple by offering sacrifices in abundance and with great joy. Following the initial days of dedication came the Feast of Tabernacles in the eighth day. And Solomon sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. This event marks one of the few times that Israel was in harmony with God joyful in their portion and grateful to their God. 1 Kings 9 relates that after Solomon had completed all his building projects, the temple, Solomon's residence, 
the Queen's residence and the buildings of the national government, God appeared to him a second time. This seems to be indicated in 2 Chronicles 7 11 12 as well. Yet 1 Kings 9 10 appears to state that 20 years marked the completion of the building projects, a timing factor not mentioned in 2 Chronicles. And if that is what 1 Kings 9 10 is indicating, then, since Solomon began building the temple, in the fourth year of his reign, the appearance of God would have occurred in his twenty-fourth year as king. God appeared and made promises to Solomon. Once again, these promises are closely related to the promise God made to David in 2 Samuel 7. And, once again, some argue that the words of God to Solomon make his promise to David conditional. But they do not, the promise to David was and remains unconditional. God told Solomon that he had accepted his prayer, and that he would hear the prayers of Israel made toward the temple, and show mercy and forgiveness when his people repented. Then God added, As for you. 2 Chronicles 7:17, Speaking of Solomon, not David. Now, what did God promise Solomon? God promised that if he remained faithful, God would establish his, Solomon's, throne forever, as he had promised David. The promise to David was unconditional. One of his descendants would sit on a throne ruling over the children of Israel in every generation. But now God extends to Solomon the opportunity to ensure that this descendant would also be a descendant of Solomon. If Solomon sinned, then the punishment would be the destruction of the kingdom, not an immediate end to the dynasty of Solomon. If Solomon sinned, Israel would be taken from the land as a captive people. But God did not say that at the time Israel was taken captive Solomon's throne would also cease. God promised that the kingdom would be destroyed. Whether Solomon's dynasty would be extinguished at that time too was not stated. In point of fact, the Bible later reveals that Solomon's dynasty will end at Christ's second coming to take the throne, as Christ, by his mother, was a descendant of David through David's son Nathan, not Solomon. But until then, Solomon's dynasty would continue, and does so today, see the throne of Britain, its biblical origin and future. The beautiful and profound wording of 2 Chronicles 7.14 has made it one of the most well-known Bible verses to those who look to Scripture for inspiration and guidance in prayer. And, 1 Kings 8, Verse 63, here we are told that this sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep were peace offerings. As a reminder back to our study in Leviticus, the peace offerings were the only offerings all who were clean in Israel could eat and participate in. What a feast! At this special moment in Israel when God's presence was with His people, they all fellowshiped together in peace and abundance as if they all sat down together at a table for a meal, God, His priests and His holy people. It is a wonderful visual picture of the harmony that was intended to be enjoyed.